Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I am going to do our June 3rd, just for today, in a meditation. How are we doing this morning? Well, it's my hope that you're doing well. The title of the meditation for today, Direct and Indirect Amends. We make our amends to the best of our ability. That comes from the basic text, page 40. The ninth step tells us to make direct amends wherever possible. Our experience tells us to follow up those direct amends with long lasting changes in our attitudes and our behavior. That is with indirect amends. For example, say we've broken someone's window because we were angry looking soulfully into the eyes of the person whose window we've broken and apologizing would not be sufficient. We directly amend the wrong we've done by admitting it and replacing the window. We mend what we have damaged. Then we follow up on direct amends with indirect amends. If we've acted out on our anger, breaking someone's window, we examine the patterns of our behavior and our attitudes. After we, we repair, excuse me, the broken window, we seek to repair our broken attitudes as well. We try to mend our ways. We modify our behavior and make a daily effort not to act out on our anger. We make direct amends by repairing the damage we do. We make indirect amends by repairing the attitudes that cause us to damage in the first place, helping ensure we won't cause further damage in the future. Just for today, I will make direct amends wherever possible. I will also make indirect amends, mending my ways, changing my attitudes, and altering my behavior. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, that we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today, please, and thank you. You know, I think in Narcotics Anonymous, we're so used to talking about the we of the program uh, that very few of us actually say the serenity prayer in the first person. And I like to encourage you to do that. I like to encourage you to do that when you're going about your day and it's not we as in you're not with anyone you're the one struggling, it's you and God. <laughs> I want for you to practice saying it in the first person. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You see, because there's a time and a place for everything. Uh, and sometimes when you are struggling, that needs to be your personal prayer, right? And so I want you to get in the habit of doing that. You can do whatever you want, obviously, but I would think that we want to be comfortable with both forms of it, okay? All right, so let's see here. We're talking about direct and indirect amends. I have to be really careful with this topic, guys, right? because I have a whole spiel that I go through <laughs> when I am talking about the process of making an amends. Uh, and it's, uh, it's always interesting, and I love it when I use uh, this personal story of mine to, to explain this process. Uh, but this morning, I want to be brief, and I want to make sure that we understand that direct amends and indirect amends, they go together. So much of my life, I thought, okay, making an amends wherever possible, except for when to 
do so would cause harm kind of left me a lot of wiggle room on interpretation. And so I kind of followed this school of thought that if the person was no longer alive, I could make a living amends, right? I could change my behavior and uh, that's indirect, but I could change my behavior because they're no longer here. Um, That if it would cause, cause something else to jump off trying to make the amends I could also make an indirect amends like I could choose you know whatever the wrong was I could choose not only to correct the behaviors that led up to it but I could also choose to support a cause or you know something like that um if they're finding out that I did such and such to them or I you know, something on a a moral level that was just a violation, uh, if that was going to cause more issues, more trauma for them, then I would look for ways to amend my behavior towards humanity in a sense, okay? So there's all of these different things. Uh, some, Some people will say whatever it is, we need to deal with it, but I believe that causing more harm to others and to myself are things that I'm not trying to do when I'm trying to get clean, I'm trying to recover. I'm not trying to make matters worse. I'm not trying to add people to my 10th step, right? I'm not trying to recreate um, a whole new fourth step in recovery, although we often do. I know that I did, okay? And so there's this division that we create sometimes between direct amends and indirect amends. But this meditation makes it really clear. We do both. In the third paragraph, it says, then we follow up our direct amends with indirect amends, right? So if I broke the window, there was a broken behavior or attitude or pattern that led me up to that broken window. And so I modify my behavior. That's what we're talking about now when we say indirect amends. And and not now in the sense like in 2020, you know, or 2024 rather, uh, but now in the sense that we've progressed to the point where we can have this conversation that is not indirect in the way that people sometimes talk. The indirect amends follows the direct amends. And that is mending your ways, changing your attitudes and altering your behavior. And that's what I want you to walk away with today. And if you're not there, if you're not at that point, I just want for you to understand that eventually you will be. If you're trying to rush something because you want to try to salvage a relationship, a marriage, a job, you might be able to actually do that right? By making a superficial amends, right? Kind of cleaning up as much of the mess as you possibly can and staying out of the way, (laughs) you know, in the sense that, you know, you're showing up at your job now. So you probably uh, showing up at your job, you may end up being faced with some disciplinary action and just take it on the chin so that you can keep your job. I would encourage that, right? Um, I would not encourage going into your employer and telling them you've been stealing their time, (laughs) stealing their time and stealing their uh, tools, stealing their whatever. I I wouldn't go in and do that. I would run that through a sponsor and figure out what is the appropriate way to make an amends. Um, so that you can maintain your job. And one of the ways that you're going to do that is keeping your hands off of things that don't belong to you, quite simply, right? Because before just about every action, there's a thought that takes place before you take it. And if we're not accustomed to being individuals that have a check system where we stop ourselves from doing the things that we're thinking about doing, we're going to have a hard way to go in life. And so you just want to kind of start, uh, start to train yourself, 
to take the time to be still long enough before you act and give yourself a window of opportunity. I think I talked about that a, a month or so ago, a window of opportunity, right? To go with not the first thought and maybe not even the second thought, but the right one, go with the right one for the right reason. Family, my name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope that you have a beautiful day on purpose. I plan to talk to you soon.